you know a worker who is a just jump in, get it done kind of guy? Well, Hank was a muscle man. He had big, broad shoulders, and he was just as tall as his shoulders were wide. And he means well. It's just a lot of times things didn't go well. On a job site in the far corner, the water main had busted, and there was puddles of water everywhere. The whole corner was all muddy, sloshy, sticky mud. Once the water company was done inside this trench, where the pipe was down 10 feet deep, this trench was 10 feet wide and 10 feet long, the superintendent told the water company, don't worry about it, we will fill that trench back up. And so the water company left. The superintendent turned to Hank and said, grab a couple guys and go out there and put the posts in and the fence around that trench until this site is dry and we could put that dirt back in there. So Hank got in, got on the backhoe, which is like his favorite place to be. He's actually really good on the backhoe. And he can make that thing do amazing, fine work. As he gets out there, he's headed towards the yard. When all of a sudden, instead, he turns that bucket over and he uses it as a grater. He starts pulling all that, those puddles of water and that mud all to one corner, cleaning up that whole part of the site. Meanwhile, back over there at the yard, the guys are looking at him going, what's he doing? When is he going to come over here and pick up these posts and the fence? One of the workers goes over to where the operator is, and Hank just ignores him. Even though he's trying to spot him and help him out when he gets close to the edge of that trench, he's focused on one thing and just getting that job done as he moves all that mud, cleans off the work site. Then he decides to go ahead and just push the rest of that pile of mud into that trench. And he's got it about half full now of that good sticky mud. And the dirt, clean dirt now is easy to get to. And he starts scooping that up and putting that in the trench too. After a while, he's got the trench full. And now he pulls up close and he's using the bucket just to tamp down on that top. And then he looks back at his big tires and realizes I could tamp it even better with those big wheels. And he starts to pull atop of that space. All of a sudden, right by the rear tires, it sinks a little bit and mud starts to ooze up right there by those tires. He gets big eyes as all of a sudden the whole backhoe starts to slip like it's in quicksand down farther into the trench. He quickly jumps up out of the cab, starts to go forward towards the bucket. And all of a sudden it is just swallowed up, hits that water main and a water geyser comes shooting up into the air, spilling rain, water everywhere. And the site is muddy again. He's crawled up into that bucket and all he can do is growl. Ah! He's so frustrated. So to avoid having a backhoe stuck in 10 tons of mud, here's something that they should have done is have a tailgate meeting. Bring the team together, talk about what the situation is. And if it's gonna change, like instead he decides to fill that trench, then he could tell the workers, set up who's gonna be the spotter, maybe even have two spotters depending upon different factors on the job site and actually use the spotters. And if something changes and there's a decision to not continue with the original plan, talk about that with the whole crew giving input. That way you can avoid a damaged water main, great frustration, and a backhoe stuck in 10 tons of mud.